Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeff, and Chad's back with me, and we've got our special guest moderator, Ray Steinmetz, and he yeah. just had an amazing chat. Wow, it was on yeah. fire. We were just chatting before we came live about how we were trending um, in the United States again, um, doing pretty well. We bounced around in the top uh, top 20 there in the United States, um, and uh, that's always exciting. That means it's a lot of people are involved, and a lot of people are tweeting and having it. This was a great topic. If you didn't happen to be in the chat, you need to go click get in Twitter and, and look up the hashtag Master Chat because we had some amazing conversations about equity and education. And so really great topic, Ray. Um, how are you feeling now coming off? I mean, I know your fingers are probably like burning, but like you, you look like you're kind of relaxing in your chair there. Are you like just wore out? How are you feeling? I'm pretty good. It's been a long day. Uh, I went to a conference today. Uh, Went to dinner and uh, met some people and uh, got home just in time for Mastery Chat. Uh, nice. I, you know, I was uh, I was kind of loading up the tweet deck uh, yeah. during the conference today, kind of last minute. So it was, uh, it's been, you know, I've been pretty busy, uh, but it's good. It's good to uh, have it good. all over. And, awesome. And, uh, to kind of reflect because I think uh, there was a lot of, good conversation going on yeah and i think that you know it's a tough topic <laughs> i think a lot of people kind of going back and forth i think uh even still my phone's going off so uh, <laughs> just a lot of really great discussion so that's, awesome yeah that's, well, that's if you're nice. watching and you were in the chat give us a comment let us know what you loved about the the chat and, and get in there i'd love it so um it really ray are there were there any uh any any other questions that you were like more so than the rest really looking forward to seeing what everybody answered and did it come through? Like, where did you get what you were hoping to get out of these questions? Were you receiving the answers? Were you getting excited about it or? Yeah. So the questions that I started with, I had, I had had a, uh, ed chat, Rhode Island. Um, I had had, uh, an equity chat, uh, topic for that maybe about a month ago or so mm -hmm. so i had kind of a base of you know three questions but you know i really like the format of uh master chat you know being able to ask kind of more in-depth questions with that mm -hmm. you know hour time frame and the six questions and i really uh enjoyed the chance to ask um i can't remember what question number it was but uh the one about what like tools and techniques yeah um you use in your classroom to, you know, make sure that it, it, it is equitable. And, you know, I'm just going to have to go back and read all those because <laughs> I have to be yeah. very honest. I didn't, <laughs> didn't catch every single thing that was said. Right. But, yeah. It's <laughs> tough. Yeah. Some of the stuff I, that it, I mean, things were flying there pretty early, but, uh, and I think that was an earlier question. Mm -hmm. but I just can't go back and check out some of those answers. Yeah. Of, like, Can you, uh, life. Any of those popping into your head now that were maybe a tools or something that you hadn't that you hadn't come across before that kind of jumped out at you or or I, I know a lot went by your your eyes tonight, so I don't, it's yeah. sometimes hard to remember specific ones, but was there any that popped out that you can think of right now or um I think that you know an overarching thing is you know voice and choice mm -hmm. in the classroom and uh you know there's just a ton of tools to do that, you know um just, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and look at all the tools to be yeah. honest. Uh, um, but just really, uh, you know, building that relationship with the kids and, and utilizing technology to be able to do that and be able to mm -hmm. coach them at a deeper level. Um, you know, I was uh, at a, a math conference today and, and just saw so many incredible things and then all the different recommendations from everybody. It's just a, it's a lot to process sometimes, you know, because there's so many things to do. And to get mm -hmm. the recommendations from people who, who have used them in the classroom and been successful, that's really powerful. Um, and uh, so that's that's an, an important piece. Awesome. Chad, anything yeah. jump out at you during the chat? A, a specific tweet um, or a tactic or a I conversation really, that kicked off to the side, anything like that? I really love the topic of equity. Uh, we were talking about on pre-chat how mm -hmm. sort of – Equity becomes the goal of any educational initiative, right? Because it's about removing barriers and granting access to students, uh, to, to allow, allowing them to grow and be successful. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then at the core is what, is what equity is about, is, is, is equitable access to a, a good education. Um, and, and Ray, I, I love the fact that you also brought in um, what does equity in the teaching profession look like? I, I thought that was a really cool question because that's not something we think about a lot, right? So what's equitable for us as professionals, not only from the standpoint, uh, and the, the reason I love that question is because it has so many layers, right? So is there, um, there's the equity of a teacher and the resources they have at, at hand to reach their students. There's the equity that a teacher has in terms of where are they geographically? Are they in a high need school? Are they in a, a well-to-do school? Like what does that equity look like in terms of resources that they have? So I love the, not only the question itself, but the, the questions that stem from those questions mm -hmm. and the conversations that, that continue to kind of spiral and ripple off of those questions. And mm -hmm. that's one of the best parts about, I think, the equity discussion is because every time I've had this in my professional career, it always creates ripples. It always creates more discussions because there's the discussion of like equality versus equity or like what's fair, what's like this and that. And, and it just creates so many great conversations and that's really what we need to be having is those really difficult, kind of awkward, weird conversations of like, what do the students need and how do we get it to them? Mm -hmm. And what resources do we have that we can leverage to make that happen? And how do we make, you know, a student that comes from a high needs, uh, low income household have the same equitable access to education as a student that, that doesn't have that scenario or has a two parent household with with a, a, a much more resources because they're go both coming to the exact same classroom, right? Mm -hmm. like they're both coming to the same place every single day and they both deserve the best possible education. So finding ways, regardless of student need or disability or what, whatever it might be, finding ways to remove those barriers and grant equitable access to students um, is such a universal like, like calling I think all educators have. And so mm -hmm. I think having those discussions becomes so, so important. Um, so, so Ray, you're, you're in a blended learning, correct? Is that, am I correct with that? So like, yes. yeah, so, so that's even another way <laughs> of, of providing more equity for students because the model of blended learning, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, you're the expert on this, not me, but like um, the, the, the idea of blended learning is, is taking the delivery of content off of your shoulders so that you can focus on intervention, support, and facilitation of, uh, of learning, right? So that you can provide yourself as a more useful resource to students in the trenches day to day in your classroom. And that your job is then not just, I'm gonna spew out information uh, as a person, but you've already done that sort of more in this blended model or, or multimodal model, giving them more equitable access uh, in the classroom using technology and devices and things like that to, to allow you to reach more students and provide that equity for education. So I think no matter what aspect, whether it's blended learning or we focus a ton on mastery learning and self-paced learning, like the goal of all of that, um, and I'm talking a lot now, I'm sorry, um, is, is, is equity, right? It's, it's removing barriers so students can succeed. So I, I love that and I could talk more, but I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> No, these are all, um, you know, really important aspects of equity in the classroom these days that I think a lot of people don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, you talk about the number of questions and kind of the discussions that come just from the issue of equity in education. And, you know, it really drives to the core of, uh, you know, societal equi equity in many aspects, yeah. you know, uh, education really really reflects society in a, in a lot of mm -hmm. ways and we're really tasked at you know solving these greater problems and uh it's um i i don't know uh kind of go into the blended learning that you were talking about i really see you know um taking the teacher kind of out of that gatekeeper yes mode yeah and um really removing themselves not only physically but metaphorically from the front of the class and mm -hmm. love it. placing the learning into the students' hands and giving them that agency. I mean, I get, you know, I just got off this math kick, you know, this math conference and, you know, everything at this math conference with the way that math is being taught now and the way it should be taught and how it's so different now, it's just so much about student agency, you know, and mm -hmm. just giving them the tools that they need to learn and discover themselves. 
I don't know. I would have loved to have been in school now compared yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me exactly. too. Same thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, my job now as a coach is, you know, so different. It's not, you know, giving the students what they need and in, in being able to implement a lot of these things. It's now convincing others of mm -hmm. their importance. And mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot hard, harder of a task is what I've found. We, we and, fully uh, understand. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. It's not an easy, easy job, but an important I one. Cause you're also, you're also there to, to once those things are in place, you're there to support them and, and help them keep them going and stuff. And that's a, that's a crucial thing. I want to say hi real quick to Henry. He commented down there to, to you and to Chad and Ray. He didn't say anything to me. I, I see what's going on there, Henry. No, <laughs> glad you jumped on, man. Um, uh, I got us off track there. So, um, Ray, any, um, any, any key tweets or answers or anything that popped out of you that you really, really enjoyed tonight? Like what was the top one? Like that's sticking in your head that maybe you didn't see coming or that was just like fueled with so much passion that you just really enjoyed what they had to say. I think that there was one of them that has just kept going back and forth. These guys, uh, and not just guys that everybody's kind of jumping in just, just really talking about, um, you know, just the way that we, um, the way that we use data and mm -hmm. the way that we, I'm just trying to get a context here. I'm trying to look back. Yeah. I think that, um, they're talking just about like really in depth about, you know, the equity issues, even, you know, once again, just another branch of this equity conversation, they're talking about you know, how data and equity and data and measurement of students. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, that was not something that <laughs> I particularly was really thinking of, you know. Right. Uh, and, and, and it's interesting now that I have removed, I'm not in the classroom anymore. So, you know, the most important data always is, you know, knowing the students. And mm -hmm. yeah, even if you you know, middle school, high school, you, you still know your students, even though if it's might be hundred or, or more, you know, or hundreds. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, the most important data is knowing them and working with them and teaching them. And once you don't have that everyday anecdotal data of being in the classroom, <laughs> remove yourself. And the only way that you have to analyze s students and to analyze the teachers is educational data and you start seeing just how everybody who makes educational decisions that's the only information they have as well and yeah. uh, they don't have the ability to be in a classroom every single day so you know um it's just it's a very interesting aspect of you know how educational decisions are made and if that in fact is an equitable make a way to make those decisions you know, given the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, just there's so many things, you know, uh, involved in the fact that scores are low and yeah. that students yeah. aren't, aren't achieving and in, in yeah. areas and, and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, you know, we just had a big, uh, we changed our um, state test last year um, to more align with one in Massachusetts and uh, we just had a big data dump. They just kind of released all the data on the state. And, uh, you know, it's just really interesting how, you know, the public didn't really care about education that much over the past couple of years, but all of a sudden now they care, you know, yeah. in the face, um, that we're yeah. not doing very well. But, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, but that's the only, you know, they're not in the classrooms every day and that's, the, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. point. Yeah. That's a really great point, especially because, and that's the difference like between, and I love that you mentioned kind of from your perspective as a coach, like you might not have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the student's data that you're looking at, right? So to mm -hmm. you, you only have the numbers, but when, when, another, when a teacher who has that student who's built that relationship looks at that same number, they can tell you 15 reasons maybe why that number exists where you only mm -hmm. have almost one or two pieces of information of, I know that their this was their map test or their, their, their Lexile level or something like that. And this is how they performed. You know what I mean? On this thing where the teacher can go, 
I know 15 reasons why this score is the way it is. And I know how much this student has grown since the first day I met them yeah. um, emotionally and socially and all these other non necessarily academic factors that aren't measured. Or I've seen a lot of teachers, they'll grow a student from like, let's say it's a math classroom, right? And you grow a student from like second grade math level to like fourth grade math level, but they're taking a sixth grade math test. Now you've grown them two full academic years from where they from where they started, but that is never going to show up on the sixth grade state math test, right? So that's not going to show up in that data. Mm -hmm. But the teacher knows how much growth that that student has, and we talk a lot with our teachers, um, with the schools and the districts that we work with. We talk a ton uh, with our teachers about like focus on that individual growth as much yeah. as you possibly can, because you know if it's happening or not. Now, if it's not, that's a different discussion, right? Yeah. But like, but that growth has to be happening somewhere. And it's possible. It's just a matter of what is growing for this student mean versus this student, right? Yeah. And that's also, like you're saying, that's equity, um, that's equity in, in how we look at that, that problem and how we look at that information as well. That was a great point. Love it. Good stuff. Uh, before we go here, I, I wanted to mention um, – I thought I had two things, but I think maybe I only have one thing. I uh, want to make sure for sure. Oh, I have two things. Yeah, two things uh, for everybody watching or listening or whatever is one is if you are anywhere remotely near the Southwest Ohio area, um, we have a really, really rare uh, open workshop um, on the grid method on Monday, Tuesday, um, this coming week. Um, and uh, we don't get to do those very often where anybody can come from anywhere. You don't have to be in Ohio. You don't have to be down there, whatever. You can all come in, come in from anywhere and get it. So I want to, I wanted to just mention that because we have a lot of people who ask us about that. And then also we have a brand new um, online course coming out at the end of next week. Super excited about that. I'm not going to tell you what it's on just yet. We're going to save that for Monday, um, but super excited about, uh, about that too. So, couple things coming up, just exciting things going on. Um, and make sure you go check out, I don't remember what episode it is. Maybe Ray does. Uh, Ray, what episode were you on Teach Better Talk? Do you remember? Um, I can look it up. I just saw it go through my stream somewhere. But anyway, go, well, just go check out all the episodes. But make sure you check out Ray's episode on Teach Better Talk um, on the podcast. It's, it was a really good one. Um, so really enjoyed having you on there, Ray. And then obviously uh, tonight was awesome. Really appreciate you. Yeah. You're leading us tonight. Great topic. Thank you. I, like you're probably going to go back and for the next four days, be answering tweets and comments and stuff and, uh, and keep uh, engaging with people. So appreciate you, sir. And uh, thanks for, for leading us tonight, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a great opportunity. Um, awesome. I really appreciate it. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you guys should uh, check out the instant relevance podcast. Yes. With, uh, and Dennis Sharon. Yes. And, uh, um, that's been going well. You know, we've had some really great guests, uh, some, you know, really awesome. great people coming on and, and uh, kind of talking about not necessarily just uh, educational equity, but, you know, how to make learning relevant for all students, which really plays into that. Equity love piece, actually, so. Yeah, love it. All right. really uh, cool. Amber just posted the link to Ray's episode of Teach Better Talk. And if you go to that link, there are links to the instant relevant podcast as well. So you can get to it all right there too. And that way you can go check out his and subscribe to that one as well. So nice plug that was important. That's good stuff. So awesome. Uh, we'll see all of you next week, same time, same place here before and after the chat. And of course on Twitter over there for mastery chat at eight o'clock. Um, and until then appreciate everything you guys do and we'll see you next week.